welcome to Ponte Lim Church online. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are about to go into the Word as always. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time to listen to the Word with us on and search the Scripture because we are a Word-based uh, church where we do not spend the day where we do not uh, we come to the Word and you, we don't open up the Scripture. We love the Word. It's food for our soul. It's food for our heart. It is nourishment. Even for our well-being, health-wise, it is in the Scripture. You eat the Word, you also feel better. The devil will attack you mentally, but when you read the Word of God, you eating and you feeling energized, you being a uh, uh, full of armor, you put the armor of God in your hand, you know how to fight those fiery darts that are coming. The shield of faith is always there. The word of God will help you and sustain you. So thank you for taking the time to uh, stop by and be ready to hear the word. Welcome to our congregation, live congregation here. Thank you so much for leaving physically your house and coming to the church. We so appreciate you so much. We have a quick announcement um, to make and it, uh, it will affect the people online as well. That's why I would like to make mention of it and make a, a record of it. Please do um, make a note that uh, we will take a little break from uploading YouTube videos because for various reasons, we have technical uh, reasons. So for a little while, this will be um, uh, our, I won't say last because by the grace of God we will be back online but by the time you see us again uploading online uh, by then by the grace of God the sound system will be better we've been working on something <coughs> we're hoping to upgrade some of the, uh, the sound system in the church so by the grace of God things will be much better sound wise even as we upload it for the quality uh, of all comes up for the glory of God okay but Please don't stop tuning into our YouTube. I, currently, there's about 179. This video will make it 180 videos. So we got over 100 messages. Please just click on the YouTube playlist and take a moment when we're not uploading. By the way, church-wise, physically, if you're near our area, be brave. Maybe we'll be, you've been watching and not being brave enough to come. Just come because we are still meeting as usual every Sunday. We're still open. It's just the video that we upload. We're taking a little break for um, various reasons. But we encourage you in that time, if you did not make it to church, even those who are part of this church, maybe you're working on a Sunday, go back to the playlist and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Over 100 messages and videos, surely there's one that God will just... Uh, it will be good for you to revisit and as you listen to it again you find that the holy spirit will speak to your current situation through that message that you listen so just click playlist there's different series different messages but do go and listen to that don't just say right i don't need to listen to any word there's a word always for your season it's over there and be kind subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet Please do give a thumbs up, encourage the speaker. We have various speakers out there and share the video with friends and family. Okay, until then, we thank you for your understanding for this quiet time. Just also one last thing, don't forget to click the notification bell because in the future, as soon as we upload again, if you subscribe and clicked on the notification bell, the bell sign, it will be an automatic, automatic reminder to yourself. It will show you when you're on YouTube that Auntie Limit has uploaded a new video and you can go back again to watching our current video by then, okay? Allow me to pray as we come to the word. Father, I thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak to us through your word. Encourage my brother, encourage my sister, encourage my friend online and right here in the building. We ask you breathe on this word. Give it meaning, Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So over the past uh, Sundays, uh, we have been um, looking at a series called The Names of God. 
and today <clears throat> excuse me today by the grace of god we would like to bring it to kind of uh i would say temporary close you can never say final because in the future we might uh, be inspired to speak about another name but for the record we like to just say a temporary close to bring it the series to land the names of god it has been fantastic in my opinion and from the encouragement that we've been hearing from people just being blessed with different names for different season they are in their life um, we will bring that message now or that series to an end, looking at the names of God in different ways. We pray to one and the same God, but he shows his character in different ways. And through the, the season that you're going, you might need to call upon that particular name of God that will, uh, will be relevant to your situation. And you call upon, it's the same God. Like I explained the very first message, Message, that I am a mother I have children and it's just the same all that but to you who is looking at me in the congregation I'm your pastor currently so I'm a mother a pastor but same person I'm also a wife but to the wife uh, when it comes to me being the wife the character if the husband is calling on me as a wife is expecting to get something uh, uh, from the wife but if my children are asking me mommy this mommy that they are expecting that character of a mom to be displayed in what they're asking in their need so when you're calling on God upon his particular name you are tapping by faith into that character so you're facing a situation as several message there's one um, I think it was David who brought the word Jehovah is the one who heals us when you seek you call upon him and they see that, that Andrea I think spoke on God is uh, 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 my the Lord is my shepherd he's there he's a provider you got need call upon him as the one who provide and there's several other names but it's the same same God and when you're facing certain situation we talked about why Christians say uh, most believers will pray and say in the name of Jesus jurisdiction here we have power when it comes to prayer of authority why we use that revisit those um, uh, names again take the Bible open it up every time we mention a scripture check it out so i want you to turn with me today to acts 25 we'll read from 1 to 12 and as we read it when we finish i will introduce which name i would like to tap into today to conclude the the series acts 25 act chapter 25 i'm going to read from 1 to 12 in the new international version but feel free to choose whichever version you like it says, three days after arriving in the province, Festus went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem, where the chief priests and the Jewish leaders appeared before him and presented the charges against Paul. They requested Festus as a favor to them to have Paul transferred to Jerusalem, for they were preparing an ambush to kill him. To kill him along the way, verse 4, Festus answered, Paul is being held at Caesarea, and I myself am going there soon. Let some of you, your leaders come with me, and if the man has done anything wrong, they can press charges against him there. And verse 6, it says, after spending 8 to 10 days with them, Festus went down to Caesarea. The next day, he convened the court and ordered that Paul be brought before him. Verse 7, when Paul came in, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him. They brought many serious charges against him, but they could not prove them. Verse 8, then Paul made his defense. I have done nothing wrong against the Jewish law or against the temple or, or against Caesar. Verse 9, Festus wishing to do the Jews a favor said to Paul, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and stand trial there before me there on these charges? Verse 10, Paul answered, I am now standing before Caesar's court, where I ought to be tried. I have not done 
any wrong to the Jews, as you yourself know very well. Verse 11. If, however, I am guilty of doing anything deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if the charges brought against me by these Jews are not true, no one has the right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. Verse 12. After Festus had conferred with his counsel, he declared, You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you will go. Let's stop there. So the situation there is clear. Paul appealed to Caesar, who at the time Caesar is the title of the governor of Rome, to the, which represented the highest rank above even the king, would you believe it? So Festus was the governor at the time, the governor in Judea. But you can read the passage and realize very quickly that he was a people pleaser. He doesn't know what to do. He's not quite decisive in terms of his authority. He's got authority to judge there, but the Jews are coming to try to influence him to send Paul where they could actually he will find himself in their hands so they can kill him on the way, as you read. But Paul, knowing his right as a Roman citizen, he said, I appeal to Caesar. So the name of God... I want to present to you today and encourage every single one of us to call upon this name is El El Yon. It means the Most High God. And I will explain why. El El El, El, El Yon, L E for elephant, L for Lima, and then you have space E for elephant, L for Lima, Y for yellow, O for olive, and for November. El Elyon, the Most High God. There are times in our life where we need to know who's the highest rank. As believers, we have also rights. Paul at the time looked around and said, this is the time to call upon my right as a Roman citizen and appeal to Caesar, otherwise I will die in the end of the Jews. And this guy who is in authority, Festus, he can't make up in mind, he can't see that there's nothing, there's no relevance on which I should be judged here. But he can't decide, he wants to please the people. He's even asking, shall I send you where they're asking to Jerusalem? But he said, I appeal to Caesar. Caesar who was at the time the highest, highest rank, the emperor above the king. And he said, there, I will appeal and I can have, I can face a fair judgment, a fair trial there. I want you to know that as we read this passage in the same manner, you look at the scripture, always look at how is it relevant to me and you, how is it relevant? It's not just a nicely packaged story out there. Oh, is that so? Is that how what Paul went uh, through? Is, that, uh, it's, is it what happened there? Try to ask the Holy Spirit, how is it relevant to me today? So Paul appealed to Caesar in a situation because people, they were Jews against him. I want you to know, my brothers and my sister, my friends online and here today, that you have an enemy and he's always looking for ways to ambush you. Yes, you have done nothing wrong, just like Paul said. Even you, Festus, know very well I've done nothing wrong here. The, the, the accusation have no basis. You know it. The same way you and I, we have an accuser. We have someone who's always planning how to ambush our life. How to, to hurt us. How to hurt our loved one, our family member. How to bring frustration not just spiritual frustration, real frustration, tangible frustration in our life. It's a devil job and his demon to find a way to frustrate the children of God. And so we need to remember there's a time in our life that there is a rank when we are facing a situation that is beyond us. When we are facing certain circumstances that is unjust. It doesn't make sense. This is not working in my life. Friend, it's spiritual. You need to wake up and realize that this situation in my life is spiritual. The things that look like it's just 
It's just a fr it's just a person at work not being nice. It's a spirit behind it. It's just a neighbor being mean. It's just a, it's spiritual because we live in a spiritual world. So learn to quickly realize that this situation, the door has been shut in an unusual way. Time to think, I need to appeal, not to Caesar. We appeal who's the highest rank in the spiritual realm. El El Yon, the most high God, is above all. Is the one who made the earth and he made heaven and earth is the Lord of all. You go even when you're traveling, those who like always holiday season coming up with August, those who like to take trip like on boat, even when you're out there in the sea. You know, there's under the sea. Have you ever heard of the marine kingdom in spiritual realm, spiritual world? You know, the spiritual world doesn't just end in our hair here. There's under the earth, under the sea, in principality here and there, even under the sea, even in the kingdom of the marine. The Bible says even in Psalm, it says even the monster, the sea monster who created the hello, El Elyon, Elohim, we did Elohim, the God who made heaven and earth, God. Now the one who's above all other little God is him, the most high, El Elyon. So we need to come to a place, say, I appeal to El Elyon. In this situation that is frustrating my life, I do not know which way to go. I do not see one person here who's got the highest rank to come into my to 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 uh, judge me with fairness to help me to to help me out of this situation. I am being ambushed. I appeal to El Elyon, the Most High God. I want to encourage your friends. When it's come to El Elyon, you want to remember that I have rights. Paul suddenly dawned on him, say, hang on a minute. I might be here, but I'm also a Roman citizen. So with that, I need to, to tap, to call upon my right as a Roman citizen. Do you know your right as a child of God? I love the term, <coughs> child of the most high God. I'm not the first person who's ever used that term, but I love it. It sounds so good. I'm the child of the most high God, a child of the one who created everything. If there's gods, little gods in the air, under the earth, on the earth, under the sea, my God is above them all. He's the most high, El Elyon, and I am his child because of Jesus. So I appeal to El Elyon. I appeal to him concerning this situation. There is no other God higher than him. There is no other God stronger than him. There is no other God fairer than him. In the real life system, even in our justice system, whichever country, I know we have some friends and family from other country watching us, whichever country you are from, the good news is that most countries have a justice system and you have court. When there's an accusation, you have been served with a letter saying you have to present yourself to the court. You have been accused about something. Even as a simple thing as you were speeding, you were caught speeding in an area where you were supposed to be driving slower, you went fast, you will receive a letter. So in a way you have been served, it's a legal term. The, and the, you will read it, it clearly says, uh, you have been uh, uh, accused, basically, you have to pay this fee. Or if you're not happy, you can always appeal. So they give you a chance to uh, say, defend yourself. We think this is your car, and usually in our country, at least in the UK, you will even have a miniature picture of like, oh, that's my car. You see the number plate. So they have proof. But there are cases where people will accuse you of things they don't have proof, like in the case of Paul. So they're giving him a chance to say, defend yourself. You have a right to appeal in your country. There's a court. But usually the higher court is called the Supreme Court. 
in the UK, our Supreme Court is the highest one in, in England, Wales, and Scotland and Northern Ireland, the Supreme Court is well. It says clearly that if you are built to the Supreme Court about something that your your local courts have not been able to, I mean, you have, you're not happy with the decision they made, you think it's not fair, you can appeal to the Supreme Court. They will take cases, criminal cases, civil, uh, civil cases, but you are almost in a way, guarantee that it will be fairer. Someone, if you think this one here have not been fair enough, everything will be scrutinized. So when we are appealed to Ellen Young, the highest, we are believing that it will scrutinize everything to my good, because I'm a child of God. I want you to go to Psalm 57. Psalm 57, there's a good example where David, it's a good one, isn't it? He was on the run, running for his life because Saul, King Saul was after him, trying to ambush him again. And so David, we find that in Psalm 57, 1 to 3, that he also appealed to the Most High God for help. He says in Psalm 57, 1 to 3, I read, Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until disaster has passed. In verse 2, he said, I cry to the God most high. What is that there? He's saying, I appeal to El Elyon, the God most high. He said, I cry out to God most high. To God who vindicates me. Verse 3 sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. Friend, is there a situation in your life that you need to take time and intercede for? Maybe for yourself or your family. I want to encourage you even not only in the week, just begin to uh, uh, call upon Ellen Yon for this situation in my family. I appeal to Ellen Yon, you are above all, send help. And whatever the enemy is accusing me of or my family, I ask for mercy. David was clever there, he just asked for mercy. Because it's, it's a spiritual matter here. We're looking at the spiritual matter in our own life. Many things we are, we, which are happening to us, like I explained. Friends, do not be ignorant. It's spiritual. And so you also, you do not attack spiritual things with physical power, physical weapon. You use also spiritual. So in the spiritual speaking, because we do not physically see our enemy accusing us. Going to the Father saying, the Bible says in Revelation is our accuser, the accuser of the brethren. That's the devil, Satan. He always accuses. You know, John, he shouldn't, he shouldn't enjoy life. Allow me to strike him and, and just let me do this disease on him. I, allow me to, to hurt this family. Allow, um, he's a, we know from the scripture that the accuser of the brethren is like those Jews who are always on the hunt to find something to ambush your life, to frustrate your life, or even to hurt you, to kill you, just get rid of it. In, in Paul's situation, they had no shame. They are just planning to get rid of him, to kill him. The same way, especially as a believer, the devil would rather, there's one less believer on earth. It's better. One less person to pray and, and annoy me and frustrate my plan, his plan. So we want to go to God because we don't know what is he accusing us of. Sometimes we're just uh, uh, leaving things and not realizing why am I going through so much trial. We don't know the accuser in the spiritual realm is accusing us of something. Sometimes it could be right. There's sin in the family because of that traces of sin, iniquity. I have a right to attack them. I have a right to pull this family down. I have the right to, oh, that drug situation is a, is a door for me. You have to let me go in. And it's the door. I have to go and pull this family down. I have to, he's, he's got ways of finding a little windows back into the life of the children. Because we don't know all the accusation. What do we need to do when we appeal to El Elyon? ask for mercy. Like David just said, 
have mercy. I don't even know where to start, Lord. These accusations are coming. Oh, Lord, you see where I'm struggling in my life. I bring my children before you. El Elyon, I appeal to you and I ask, have mercy. Because mercy will cover us. Even if we were actually wrong. So maybe the devil was right. But if we appeal to him, El Elyon, he's able to say, no, they've asked for mercy. I cover them. Mercy will cover us. So I appeal to him and ask for mercy, like Paul did. And I want to also encourage someone today and say, you know, sometimes just because I like being real, you know, just because we're calling on to El Elyon, sometimes the situation might be like, Lord, I've been asking and pleading and interceding the whole week, the whole month. I've been calling El Elyon, El Elyon, the Most High, have mercy, but I'm not seeing this thing change. I like to be real and say, you know what? There is a passage in the scripture that should encourage you and me to say what we need to do. Another strength that we need to have is to show the enemy that even if El Elyon doesn't answer me, he's God. And I believe in him and I will not stop believing him. I will not stop praising him. I will not stop worshiping him. It's the biggest frustration you can give the enemy. How much frustration does he give to us, the children of God? He gets frustrated as well when he look at you and you think, but this one, I have attacked this side, this side. They're still praising God. They're still worshiping. They are not giving up their faith. So I want to take you to the book of Daniel. We won't read the whole passage because of time. But friend, I want you to not be, again, I, forgive me for saying ignorance, but I want you to be prepared that whichever way, he answer, he doesn't answer. He's our God and he's above all. He's the most high. And so when we come in like that, it's another strength for us that you could be down, but you're not dead. Like you say, you can kick you that until the dead dog dies, he's still alive and kicking. We are still alive and kicking. And so we also show that we have our faith in the God who created heaven and earth. Whether he answers us or not, we love him. We believe he's God. One day we will know why this and that he has no answer. I still want to appeal to El Elyon. I still want to worship him. I still want to say he's Adonai. Do you remember Adonai? The Adonai meaning he's still my master. No other God. So in Daniel chapter 3, we have the amazing story of the free friend of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm going to paraphrase quickly the story. The king Nebuchadnezzar, he, he makes up uh, an image of gold, huge image. And he tells everybody, the whole of Babylon, that you have to bow to it, his own image. To cut the story short, short but when in your own time, you can read it again and be encouraged from verse 1 all the way down, read it and be encouraged. But I want to pick up for a few verses to show that these three friends, they did call upon the Most High God, but they were prepared even if he doesn't answer. That's the attitude I want to leave you as we close this series. That we are not going in thinking the devil is not going to laugh at us. See, you have been asking, you've been asking Adonai, Adonai, you've been asking Jehovah Rapha, and you haven't been healed, you see, but we're going to go in knowing we know who is our God. We know he's above all. We know he's the most high. And even if he doesn't answer, we love him to the end. And we believe. And so we know that with that strength, we are frustrating the enemy as well. Our turn, payback time. You think you're the only one who can frustrate us? We will frustrate you as well with our faith that we stand strong no matter what. And in his goodness, some situation, El Elyon will still come. In the end, he will still show up. Like he does with the children, uh, the free friend of Daniel. So we pick up the story from verse 13, when the free friend have refused to bow down to this image. Let's read a little bit and be encouraged. Daniel chapter 3 from verse 13, it says, 
Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego so that these men were brought before the king. Verse 14, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and worship the image of, of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God, listen to the arrogance, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Verse 18, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods and worship the image of gold you have set up. Oh, imagine the frustration the enemy was represented by King Nebuchadnezzar. And verse 19, then King Nebuchadnezzar, Nab Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times. Thank you. I lost the sound. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. Verse 21 it says, So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turban, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. 22. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldier who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. And we come to the bit that is encouraging, verse 24, Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisor, Were there not three men that we tied up? and threw them into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. Verse 25, he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unarmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Verse 26, Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servant of the Most High God, servant of El Elyon, come out, come here, praise God. I want you to be encouraged there. Even Nebuchadnezzar recognized that El Elyon is the one who's above all little guys. So the attitude we want to take from this message is that, yes, we appeal, Paul appealed to Caesar. In fact, when you read on the story, you will know his fate. He still died in the end, did he not? But the point is, at the time, he was going to suffer a premature death. That's what the enemy is after. A premature death for you, for you, for you, for me, for us, the children of God. But we want to stand strong, knowing that this spiritual battle, we know about it. And we're going to stand believing that we believe, we call upon El Elyon, we appeal to the Most High God. But even if he does not answer, we are going in with the attitude that even if I don't get the prayer I'm asking, some people go to the grave in faith. My friend, it's better to go to the grave in faith than in unbelief. So we will believe to the end, to the very last breath. And so as I bring this message to a close, I just want you to take these two things. Appeal to the Most High God concerning your cousin, your loved one, your parents, if they're still alive, your friend. There are a lot of things going on in your life which are spiritual. 
going into sensory mode and just say, Lord, Paul appealed to Caesar knowing he was the greatest, the highest rank. I appeal to you, the greatest of all, God, the one who's above all, the most high, Alleluia. I appeal to you concerning those who have grandchildren, my grandchildren. I haven't got the words to take them out of the road, the road of perdition where they are. But Elion, you can take them out. I just appeal to this God who's above the, the, the little God who's keeping your grandchildren down in darkness. That little God who's frustrating your children, who's frustrating your husband, who's frustrating you through whatever is workplace. Just ask, Elion, I appeal to you. I can't go to the Supreme Court, but I can come spiritually knowing that this is it. It's you or nobody else will intervene for us. So I call upon you. That's the one point. And the other point is remember our God is above all. He's the most high God. Wherever we are, whichever part of the world we are, even on holiday, on the sea, knowing that he created even the sea monster, Leviathan. Yeah, the Bible talks about it. I'm not going into it. He's a creature by demonically speaking. is a real thing. But God has showed us through his word that even some of those creatures you're afraid of, I created them. So don't worry about anything. Do not fear. Know that my God in heaven, on earth, he is the most high. He is Adam. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. In fact, thank you for the entire series of the names of God. I thank you that you have encouraged us. Encourage my friend online and presently here. You have encouraged us through your many names, your attributes, teachers, Holy Spirit. To get to know you better, to get to know our God, his character, his attribute. So when we need to call upon him, tapping by faith in a particular name of God, bring that name to remembrance so that we will just say, Yahweh, it's you we call upon. Oh God, we are your children. This morning we just acknowledge we are children of the most high God. The one who's above all. So we commit our life into your hand. On behalf of my friend here presently in the building, on behalf of my friend watching online, I appeal to El Elio and I say, Lord, intervene on our behalf. Make a stop to all the frustration the enemy is throwing in our way, to all those blockage that he is establishing for us not to move forward past the hurt that we have encountered. Oh, Ellen Young, I appeal to you for breakthrough, divine breakthrough. I appeal to you for restoration, Ellen Young, the Messiah. Let David say, vindicate us. In the name of Jesus.